already know, welcome back to the Booty Vans More Than Fitness podcast. Your host, Danita. And today we've got a very special guest. She is graduating the Booty Bands Accountability Program here soon. Her name's Carrie, and Carrie is a mom of four. And as she's now having this amazing transformation, I, I had to ask, what would you say are the secrets to your success? And she came up with four. So I'm very excited to walk you through these four secrets of a successful transformation. So let's hear it straight from Carrie's mouth. Let's begin. Booty Bands and Barbells helps busy women sculpt and tone their bodies in just 15 minutes a day through our physical products and our one-on-one -on -one coaching. All right, Carrie, we were talking and you were had this like interesting way that you start your mind just started kind of for the last several months being able to really start formulating four steps to a successful transformation and it was really cool to hear your insights on all this so you're the one that gave me all four of these steps and so I've written them down and I'm going to go over the first step and I just want to hear like how that came about what are some of your experiences with that and how you really relate to it. So the first one you said the first step to success if you guys are all listening I'm revealing it is acceptance. So tell me more about why that would be your first step to success. Um I think for me just getting to a place of accepting where I'm at, like who I am, um, getting out of my own damn way for a minute and just accepting that in the chaos and in the imperfection is kind of the beauty of, you know, just embracing the now, um, you know, and accepting the, just the mess that we're in and, um, figuring out it's kind of beautiful the, where you're at right now is beautiful. Um, and I think you kind of helped, you helped me along, along that because at first when I started this booty bands journey, um, I was very much so just like, oh, I'm such a mess and just very negative. Um, and now I'm like, yeah, I'm a little bit of a mess sometimes, but it's okay. <laughs> so you said beautiful. So um, tell me how, if somebody is listening right now and they're trying to do that, they're trying to accept themselves right now, but they don't see that it's beautiful. How did, how did you get to that point? Um, where you're at is normal. It's human. Um, these imperfections, even these cycles that you go through, they're okay. They're normal. And other people, even beautiful Danita here goes through some of these same cycles, some of these same loops. And it's that connection, connecting with others um, and kind of being like, oh, I'm not broken. I'm not weird. This is just this is the human condition, and um, yeah, I'm beautiful. Like in the mess, there is so much beauty to be found, and um, I think connecting with the right people, like oh, like you have helped me kind of unlock some of the some of the beauty in in this life that I already had. You know, already was already cultivating um, a beautiful life. I think I just needed some help looking at things a little differently to realize the beauty in what I'm yeah. creating. Thank you for sharing that. And I, when you said that, I was, I never would have said that in my own words, but as you say it, it's so true. It's so true. And you also said something about this forgiveness about grace and all that. Will you tell me more about what you meant by that? Um, yes. Having, a big part of acceptance for me um, was finding a way to give myself grace. So much, so much grace in the messing up, in the imperfection, you know, of life. And um, you kind of have to keep forgiving yourself over and over. Like this past um, weekend was my birthday weekend. And yesterday was my birthday. I turned 33. Um, and... I definitely like drank and didn't eat the best, but today I got my protein in and I ate well and, um, you know, check those boxes today. And the weekend was, yeah, I enjoyed it. It was a good weekend. Um, and I just keep moving forward. You know, I give myself the grace now to be like, well, that wasn't, that wasn't a perfect weekend or it wasn't a perfect day or meal or snack. And then we just, I moved forward and in giving myself that forgiveness, I release it. And it's, you know, that's, it's just, it's just a moment in time. It's not, it doesn't define me. Um, 
it just you know it's just it's not a big deal whereas before I would get stuck in this cycle of I messed up I was I was very big into being down on myself for messing up but yeah that's what humans do we mess up but we also get back up and keep going at it again and again and that's exactly what I was going to ask you what was you what were you like before and you you made me remember mine and it was that mess up led to then a, a a feeling of, man, I'm just a failure, which then led mm-hmm. to the next action, which is watch TV or, you know, not do anything productive. And then what did that feeling leave? More failure. And so then now all of a sudden you're just doubling down on failure. So then you go and look at it. It's like weeks and months go by. You start thinking, oh my gosh, because I didn't forgive myself or give myself grace over just one meal or one weekend, all of a sudden we hold ourselves in this jail imprisonment of forever failure experience. So I love that you said this is a first step because truly if you guys are listening and you're experiencing that right now, your emotion is so powerful. It is either the, it's, it's, it's what really drives change. And so we're either building on top of failure by like, oh, trying to create these really big goals for ourselves, But there's an art form, which we're going to get to in just a moment, which is actually, I think, number two. Oh, we're there. Number two <laughs> is um, you said it's about action, which is the simple steps. So tell me what you mean by the simple steps. Um, well, I think once you kind of accept who you are and where you're at in your journey, um, then it's like, okay, so I know I have the knowledge. now let me find little ways to trick myself, um, little, little actions, because I used to be that big grandiose, I'm going to hardcore eat 300 calories a day or some like crazy diet, crazy exercise plan that was not sustainable. And then inevitably when I failed or messed up at that, I was back in that emotional spiral. So knowing me, knowing I like to go that all in hardcore, let's do everything at all at once. And that's not, you know, that just, that cycle didn't work for me for all these years. Um, once I kind of accepted, also I'm not a super organized person. Like that's just not really my nature. So working with you, I found little small action steps, like literally things like bringing a protein shake to work consistently. Um, you know, making, um, meals that were so simple, but just focusing on one meal to bring to work with me. Um, you know, just the little baby steps, you know, um, obviously the short frequent workouts to build that habit for myself. Um, you probably don't remember this, but early in my journey, I asked you, I said, Danita, if a workout can't be like hardcore, like I can't hardly walk the next day. I'm so sore or like, you know, I'm sweating and can't breathe. You know, you, I really asked you like, should I even do the workout? And you're like, yes, absolutely. And that was another shift for me of um, another little action because I used to think the workout had to be killer or I shouldn't do it at all and now I'm like that's crazy that's so silly you know now I'm happy this morning you know it was a short little 15 minutes and it was great and I felt great and then I cleaned my house all day so the ripple effect look it just carries over right uh I, I, yeah, I love what you said that. And a lot of people can relate to that as far as those simple steps. And you, you mentioned something about the macros, right? I, as soon as I say that, I feel everybody starts to cringe on the call. Cause it's like the, most, it's, it has got to be this most scariest word in, I feel like the world right now, people are like, as soon as they hear that, they're like, <laughs> what is that? It's a monster. And it is just so scary. And I think because the fitness industry has put so many details and it's been so overwhelming for people that they can't even just take the first step with it. And so you said on the first call that we went over just one macro first. Do you remember what that one was? Yes. Protein. And listen, I'm still, I'm still working on getting that, those protein goals in. Um, I'm not, you know, not perfect at it and that's okay. But that is actually still um, the macro that I'm focusing on. I'm working on consistently hitting my protein goals and then we'll, we'll start looking at another macro. But again, my, one of my simple action steps is just 
trying to consistently get that protein in to fuel my body and to build muscle. So yeah, I love I, it. We <laughs> and I don't, a- I don't fear macros anymore. <laughs> That's a win. Did you guys hear that? That is a big win. Not fearing that anymore. And it's true. It's, you should not fear. Nobody should fear macros. And it's sad that people do because it really stops them in really building up to their nutrition where they really need. So what they do is they just stop eating or they're really just comfort eating and they're just mindlessly eating. They have no idea what they're eating. But to be honest, I am still trying to get my protein in. And so when I have a member come in for the first time and they're like, I need to know my exact protein, carbs, and fat percentage, tell it to me now. And I'll be like, no, no. And they're like, wait, what? And I'm like, no, I'm not a cookie cutter plan. Your body's extremely smart. I'm going to work with your body, not your perfectionist side of you. And it drives them nuts. And I go, I'm literally just going to take you where you're at right now. How many, how many times do you get protein in a day? And common answers one to two times a day, you're protein deficient. Okay. So let's start there before I think of giving you some really overwhelming number that you and I can't even meet the expectation of really what it needs to be at is so sometimes hard, like even bodybuilders aren't even reaching this. Okay. So it's extremely difficult in general, just to get your your protein levels in. And so the reality is if you're struggling with that, well, so am I now we're in the same boat. Welcome to the party. And (laughs) we can get results all along the path as we struggle. (laughs) Very cool. Um, so simple steps, um, besides macros, you said, uh, workouts, right? The 15 minute workouts instead of the no pain, no gain, sweat your face off, kill yourself type of mentality. Yes. <laughs> right. And so, um, for those that are listening, I want you to really think about what your simple step is. I like what Daisy said on a podcast. She said, when I looked at my hundred pound weight loss journey, instead of thinking of the hundred pounds, she just looked at the first 10 pounds. And that was her little way of simple steps. So everybody's simple steps can be a little bit different. So if you guys are listening, grab your journal and just really think about what your main goal is and then break it down into steps. So I love that. Okay, step number three is the open for various possibilities. Like you were kind of explaining about releasing this attachment of a specific outcome. Do you remember that? I do, I do. Um, When we started this process, I was very weight focused, very attached to my scale. Um, I would weigh daily, at least multiple times a week, like three to five times a week. And if the numbers were down, we'd have a great day. If they were up, it was a terrible day. Um, And I just had this very rigid mindset of what success was. Um, And now my, I can't tell you the last time I got on a scale or what my weight is. Um, but my victories are, I can lift some heavy weight that I thought I would never be moving. Like I can deadlift, you know, 150 pounds. And I would have, when I started this process with you, Danita, I couldn't even get through one, um, 15 minute workout without having to pause it at the beginning with the lightest weight and then like come back later in the day. And now I'm like adding rounds and adding weights, um, and just doing things that are unbelievable. But I let go of that one determining factor, that very rigid mindset that I have. This is what success is going to look like for me. Um, I think success looked like I was going to be 130 pounds and super skinny. And I don't even want that now. Like now, like I could kick your ass. (laughs) the The goals have changed and I'm not so attached to, um, a look or a, I feel good. I'm more active with my kids. Um, I feel accomplished. I'm like, damn, I am sorry. I'm cussing a lot. (laughs) Like I am a badass, you know, and, um, that just letting go. Yeah. Just like a lot of letting go of being rigid in, um, your outcomes and in the process. Like you think that things are going to happen one way or your body's going to respond one way. And sometimes that's not the case. It's going to, you know, you're just going to have to be flexible. It's a big, a big part of it is learning that flexibility in your outcomes and in your process. And when you said that, I was just getting done listening to a, it's kind of like a, 
guided meditation with Dr. Joe Dispenza. That is this amazing doctor that studies the brain and teaches you about how you can reprogram your, not only your mind, but then to change your body about how you can, how he was, he has this really amazing story about how he got into a bicycle accident and that all doctors that he went to said, you are going to be paralyzed the rest of your life. You cannot walk anymore. And so he would not let that be a reality. And he started working on the mindset portion to rebuild his cellular system and his nervous system. And it actually allowed him. Now he does it with hundreds and thousands of people across the world. And he does all these amazing retreats and it's proven to work. They actually have uh, actual studies and they, they bring in all these scientists and all this, all this machinery, and they literally connect people to these machines and they can actually see like their vibration frequency, everything. And it's just been so mind blowing. And so I follow this guy. And for those that are listening, check him out. Dr. Joe Dispenza. He has a lot of free stuff on YouTube. And it's so interesting when you brought up step number three, my like light bulb went off and I'm just going to read this to you guys that are listening because it just really is cemented in what Carrie said. So Releasing attachments to outcomes is a profound and liberating mindset that can greatly enhance your ability to manifest your goals, not fitness goals. Even you're talking about business goals, relationship goals, whatever you're looking for in life, this all applies. So it enhances your ability to manifest your goals through visualization and other personal development practices. So becoming too attached and fixated on a specific result can create that stress and that anxiety and those limitations and the actual fear of not achieving the results um, is where you're getting, you get stuck into your pattern, your path. And so when you release the attachment, it frees you from this emotional roller coaster tied to the, su the success or the failure of the specific result. And then when you release it, you become open to exploring the different possibilities, which can lead to the unexpected and often better outcomes. This will strengthen your resilience and you'll become better equipped to handle the setbacks and you can learn to adapt to the changing circumstances because you aren't tied to a single way of achieving your, achieving your goals. And I just, it really goes into that like de detachment, things like that. And that. I read right before you had told me that. And it was just so profound when you said that was a key to success. I said, you are absolutely right. Very cool. So it leads me to now, and I have a secret about Carrie, you guys, that um, I'm going to make her confess that she did this really sexy photo shoot. And um, she's going to tell us about taking her power back, even as a mom and as a wife and have let herself go for many years and she's taken it back. So as you heard that, like really strong, confident self, there's like more to that. We're going to get to in a second, but we're going to go <laughs> to step four. Okay. So step number four, you said was embracing the changes that are happening. So that was kind of like that. Do I deserve it or do I not? So tell us more about that. Um, I think just like your higher self, um, as you get to a place, of, I mean, it's one thing you can work out, you can lose all the weight, you can eat all the things correctly. Um, but until you really find yourself believing that I'm worthy and I'm deserving of all these good things that are happening, like I, um, you know, that reaching that place was like, is a, such a, completion such a resolution for me um because we all a lot of us hold these inner beliefs of I'm not good enough I um don't deserve these wonderful things that are happening in my life or or the other common belief is something's gonna happen like the other shoe is gonna drop and this isn't gonna be my reality um and just really letting go of all those of all those negative beliefs about myself and about um, what I deserve in life. And yeah, it's just it's been it's been beautiful. And um, another confession while we're confessing things, when we first started this process and like some of my first calls with you, um, you picked up on that right away that I needed mindset. Like I needed that so badly. And I remember being like, we didn't even talk about food or nutrition like <laughs> and just being super like oh well we didn't even you know 
Um, and we had some deep phone calls and I would get off the phone and I'd be like, oh, I just cried. <laughs> but um, those were so necessary. And, you know, just like you were talking about earlier, the mind is so powerful and believing that you deserve these good things manifest more of them in your life. I truly believe that, um, you know, just the mind affects so much of the physical. Um, Danita's helped helped me get there. But at first I was like, really? We're talking about feelings today. <laughs> right. You're like, wait, did I sign up for a therapy session or a, or a personal trainer? Which, which did I get today? <laughs> But little did I know I needed both. <laughs> uh, we can thank a very special lady named Donna. I don't know if she'll ever listen to my podcast, but when I was a, a physical trainer, meaning like actually met me at the gym, ah, she's the one that got away. And I'll, what I mean by that is I had a good about 80 to 90% success rate when I was a personal trainer, but that wasn't enough for me. I needed a hundred percent and Donna was not getting a transformation. And it was driving me absolutely bonkers because I was working so hard on her workouts and so hard on her nutrition. And we dialed it in perfect. And the next thing I know, the next time I saw her, I was like, wait, why, why are the numbers off? And she goes, oh, I binge ate this week. And I was like, oh, well, why, why did you do that? And she was like, well, I don't want, I don't want people to see me. I don't want people to like lust after my body. So I was like, Oh, so your weight is literally a form of protection. Oh, okay. So you're sabotaging everything that we are doing at the gym because you are literally in your mindset holding on to a form of protection. Okay. So that was the moment I said, Danita, you can't be 100% successful as a trainer unless you go down the self development world and you really thoroughly know this inside and out. And you have to take yourself down it to fully experience what it's like to pull somebody out of depression, to pull somebody out of those limiting beliefs, to pull somebody out of those suicidal thoughts. I'm not worthy. I'm not deserving. I'm not wanted. All of that. I had to go through that struggle. And wow, what did we see on the other side, Carrie? Oh my goodness. Such a, just such a mind by transformation. Just, you know, I said, just feeling like a badass now, you know, living my best life. <laughs> okay. So let's actually tell them about living your best life. All right. So tell us what you did a couple of weeks ago with your girlfriends. Tell us all about it. Yeah. So we had a girl's trip to Orlando and, um, at the start of this trip, well, it's supposed to be the start. It ended up being the end of the trip because of rain, but, um, we were determined. We did a, um, friends sexy photo shoot we all had masks on the ones that we shared um from our face up scary like ghost face um and different like halloween masks and then lingerie on our bottom half and it was so oh my gosh it was amazing um all of us are moms except for one you know um none of us have supermodel bodies but um you know we've we hyped each other up and it was so just so empowering to be like yes i'm a mom but also I'm still a sexy woman. I still, you know, I still got it. And um, it was amazing. My husband loved them. Oh my goodness. <laughs> he loved them so much. <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, Did you see your legs and your booty girl? Holy cow. Okay. My, booty, my booty was booty. It looked, it was good. <laughs> yes. Oh, I love it. And when you sent me those photos and I was looking at, I mean, I was like, girl, like the confidence, the poses, like everything. So now I do have to, to I, as we're in confession, um, I do have to confess to you that I initially didn't have a self-love photo shoot in this particular program. I've done it in the past and I've done it in my retreats, but I haven't added it into this program you and one other member, Margaret, is what enticed me to create a self-love photo shoot. So I just want to say thank you. Yay! I yeah. love it. Yes. Oh my yeah. goodness. Yes, I love it. And if Carrie lets me, um, if Carrie lets me advertise any of those pictures, I'll post them in this podcast. Oh my gosh. Podcast. Yes, please share them. I'm really. Yeah. Oh, girl. Absolutely. Okay. For those that are watching, you're gonna see them throughout the podcast right here. Then, so check these photos they're little, out. They're a little spicy. <laughs> They're spicy, but you know what, for those that are moms or for those that are business boss babes, or for those that have, uh, you know, just maybe have lost your like sexy pizzazz, you know what, let's get it back. It's time. Right. 
And we don't have to waste any more years thinking, oh, I can't, or that's not me or blah, blah, blah. How did you get past those thoughts, Carrie? Because I know you have those of like, oh, I'm, I'm not the perfect model yet. Maybe I shouldn't be doing this. How did you get past those? Um, having a friend group hype me up was great. Like doing it with friends. That was great. Cause we were all like, Oh my God, you look good. One of our friends was like, Oh, you look a pure dominatrix. Like, you know, having, um, that good support system around you to hype you up. And then I think it goes back to acceptance, like back, right back to step one. Um, you know, my body's done some amazing thing. It's brought four beautiful children to this world and um did a lot of growing and shrinking over the years and has changed but um just working out and working with you Janita it's there's so I find beauty in it now whereas I used to stand in front of the mirror and pick it apart now I'm like oh I showed one of the girls on one of the pictures like can you see that little tricep definition there like <laughs> as I'm flexing like, you know it's um you know it's just easier now it's easier to fine oh yeah I'm still a woman I'm still sexy I'm not just like an old mom you know not just um there's more to me than that and it's a beautiful thing when you get there and it is possible because I will tell you I was in a very when Danita started with me very just kind of just very down overall on myself and where I was at and definitely not not much self-love there not much self-acceptance I would have never done this photo shoot even, even six months ago, definitely not a year ago, but here we are now. Here we are. And you guys get to see him too. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it's, it's honestly, it's my, my, my most fascinating thing is just witnessing the very first call, the very first week, those calls that we've had along the way till now, it just, I mean, your smile and just that like moment of all the shifts and that confidence you step into, and it's unbreakable. And then what does it do? It goes to your children's lives, doesn't it? So are you starting to see any ripple effects happen- happening there? Yes, absolutely. Um, my oldest son, he's 14. Um, my dumbbells love to go missing. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, I was trying to get her workout, you know, get ready, set up her workout. I'm like, where is this dumbbell or where's my barbell? And they'll be in his room. They're in my teenager, my 14 year old's room. Um, and there was one day I had, you know, my little yoga mat out and some booty bands were laid out and my, um, she was seven. Yeah, she's still seven, but this was when she was seven. And, um, my little girl, Morgan, she was, she put the booty band on, it's a little big on her, but, and she was doing squats in the living room with the booty band. So they definitely, they're watching and they're seeing, they're like, oh, mom's changing and this is cool. And we want to be a part of this. And, um, we walk together. Like we go, we, um, we live out in the country and they'll walk with me more than they used to do. They were always like, no. And they'll walk with me. And I even had my um, 12 year old little girl be like, mom, I want you to help me make better decisions with food. I want you to help me figure out how to eat healthy, which is crazy. Cause this, she's a junk food junkie. So it's, it's a huge ripple effect to my family. Um, you know, they, they're watching, they're watching mummies, even, even when you think, cause I would have told you that they had no interest except for the fact that I couldn't stop <laughs> the workout, um, to get what they wanted, but no, they're watching. And I, and I'm frequently having to say, mom's working out. I'm like, I right, just 10 more minutes also, or like, I can't breathe right now. I can't talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> you'll have to get back to me when I'm done my workout and they kind of accepted it now they don't even try you know they wait till I'm done and then you know and then I'm a better mom then I have more to pour into them then I have more to give to them and that's beautiful too and we have it the opposite we think that we as we that mom guilt comes in we think about not putting that time for ourselves we want to put it towards them and then when we do we're fuming and we're angry and we're frustrated so is it really helping them right so i mean it's a whole thing and so it's truly that you can see the full picture now from the other side to this side and I don't know if you recall, but coach Monica, I, I tell her about your success all the time. And I, I tell her about your results and stuff. And she goes, you know, um, Carrie actually came in and her biggest, why was her children. So pretty cool. Sometimes our, why has to be somebody else. And then throughout the program, then you start to actually find yourself. So then you can start creating that why within yourself. 
And if it has to start with kids, great. Sometimes that's what it has to take. If we feel like we're not deserving it of ourselves, we'll do it for somebody else. And so that's initially how it started. And then it created a whole other opening of finding yourself and over you're over here taking boudoir photos with your friends <laughs> and loving every minute of it. Yes. It's been a beautiful, it's a beautiful journey. I'm still on it. You know, I'm still, still working on it every day, but it has been amazing. That's awesome. So thanks for your time today and jumping on. And I know you have four kids. So this was my absolute just joy for you to come on here and share, share these four secrets. I absolutely know they're going to be very helpful for those that are listening as they're just stuck. You know what it feels like to feel that stuck and think that you're broken and everything you're trying, that scale just hates you. Yeah. And so um, what a beautiful message to come on here and just share the truth with us and how you were able to do it. Thank you for having me, Danita. Yeah, love it. All right, have a good one. Since you felt like this, 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 this,